think it would be a good outlet for everybody. We missed it. We need to get outside. Although okay. we have our mask, but uh, we're good. We have our uh, duet here. <laughs> they have we need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. Not to uh, make anybody uncomfortable, but I talked to Don before we did this. And if he wasn't here, I don't think we would be either. So, what do you say? Your voice is more than anything? Right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. It would be in Latin. That's all I remember. <laughs> so, so anyway, I thank everybody for being here. And shall we begin? Our best shot. The music might be out of order. Maybe not.
getting ready this morning, I think about how for us, we can go, I'm going to go jump in the shower now. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Uh, they didn't have it so easy. They had no clue like what we have now. So I just thought it was pretty interesting that we all can sit out here in electric lights. And, you know, but of course, the fire is the same for us, although maybe not as well constructed back then. And uh, I just thought it was kind of neat to celebrate this day as we always do. So here's Psalm 118. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and his, mar and his marvel in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you all. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the vessel procession, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good.
gospel today is from St. John, the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but not, did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' face. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise be to you, you, O Christ. If you like, you can see the procedure. Did you have something next to it? Let me tie this all together. Let's see. <laughs> or let's all tie it together. Together. How's that? You know, all these readings, if you think about them, the Old Testament reading, well, there's the song, shouts of joy and victory. Isn't that what we're all, what we cling on to? What do we have if we don't have that hope? They didn't have anything, and yet they had spent all that time walking with the master for three years. I can just matter, matter, imagine in Peter's, uh, Peter's mind, I just spent three years with this guy. He taught us all these cool things. We did all sorts of wonderful things. He is going to lead us. And now, he's gone. And I didn't end it very well myself with him. I denied him again. And I swore I wouldn't do that. So I can just see Pat Peter and the other guys just kind of swirled away somewhere. And I think about it sometimes for us. We have these situations in our lives that are so screwed up. Or messed up if you prefer. But screwed up that we end up hiding. And when we end up hiding, we're just like them. There's been no change in human beings or the way they think or the way they act since the beginning. We all have a bit of pride that doesn't want us to come out and be with that, each other. And that piles on more, and Satan loves that. As I watched the crows or the ravens back then, or the crows back then flying around just pecking on things, pecking on the, the seed, the, the, the dead material. That's what's around us. It tries to bring us down all the time. It tries to destroy us. But us, like the disciples of old, we have this hope. We have this great faith. So in this song, the shouts of joy and victory. We have songs like this, right? I will not die but live. I will proclaim what the Lord has done. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. We know that is what 
were said by, by Jesus when he talked about the temple being torn down and in three days. Nobody understood that because they knew how long the temple was going, right? The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How do we leave here and keep that in us all the time? Maybe we remember the words of the psalm. Remember when we read this psalm every day. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine on us. We didn't ask for the light to shine on us, right? Just like when he talks about the rain. The rain falls on the good and the bad. He doesn't say so the sun shines, this sun, but his sun shines on us all the time. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. It doesn't matter what. He's talking about the Lord. So if we have this one constant, like when they walk in the desert with a pillar of smoke and the pillar of fire to lead them, it didn't matter what they were doing because this was going on, right? This caravan's moving on. And in the Old Testament reading, this is right after the Egyptians were thrown into the, the Sea of Reeds or the Red Sea, where they witnessed this impossible miracle, another one. And they're so excited. Hey, God's on our side. God's always on our side. And sometimes we don't get to see it that way. But it doesn't matter, because God was on their side. And as these uh, Egyptians were coming after them. Oh, we gotta get these guys. And we gotta take back everything they took from us because they, they looted the place, right? That's where all the gold and stuff came from. And now they're gloating. Gloating in the defeat of their enemies. They're praising God. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. But they sat here and they were gloating about this. And as you know, we should never gloat over the failing or the falling of an enemy because we shouldn't have that happen, right? We should be praying for the one who's stumbling. That's what should be happening all the time. In this New Testament reading in Corinthians, your boasting is not good. Same thing, right? Don't you know that a little yeast leavens a whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. So he said we already are this new batch of bread. So don't bring in stuff that's going to hurt you and hurt the, the group. <clears throat> For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, if you know about this church in Corinth, uh, what Paul is talking about here was they were doing some bizarre things, you know? And the thing that they're talking about, uh, he's talking about this, is somebody doing stuff with his father's wife. And that shouldn't be. And Paul is just like, what are you kidding? And the guy was happy about it. It says so in Scripture. So you think about that. you got to be careful when we boast in, right? Because that's not a good thing that he said. And then in the Gospel, you get to hear once again about these women. All the rest of the time we hear about these guys. But here we hear about these women who are silently behind the scenes doing the work that Maybe we would help with, maybe we wouldn't, maybe somebody went back then, or maybe even now we say that's woman's work. Mm -hmm. They're going to go into this tomb and they're going to anoint him, right? They're going to prepare him again. So all these kind of things we think about and we look at, and like I said before, we're so easy to get away with stuff. We're so easy because nobody's smiting us. We don't really see God smiting people these days, right? We might say it when we say something bad happens, but that's not necessary. That's just the way things are. So back to us and the excitement. This excitement they experienced in the tomb was somebody told Jesus. Not that he was resurrected yet, 
And so Mary heard him, heard the rabbi talk to her. And then, you know, we know later on, because if you sat there and said, ah, oh, I don't know, well, it's a pretty day, maybe I'll start back to the, to the fishing business, you know? Or maybe I'll go back to my old job. And he's not here, but we, they didn't know how it was gonna happen. And he finally did appear to them. And they got to share in that, that joy. But the work was just beginning. As soon as they heard that he was alive, there was more thinking about festivals and more teaching and stuff. But now they were going to be by themselves. They weren't going to have the master anymore. He gave them all the tools they needed. Just like us, we have all the tools we needed, or, or that we need in the book. Not this is not the book, but in the book. And with guidance that we've received. So the simple thing for us is to do what Jesus said. And I always come back to this now because there's nothing else for us. It's to love God with all that we are. And love one another. And so as we look at that, we can be like the, poor, the rich man who walked away dejected. Or we can be the followers who jump in and follow Jesus. Look, we're not always going to be riding on the front, you know, charging ahead. Sometimes we have to be in the back cleaning up the horse poop, okay? Doesn't matter how we serve, doesn't matter what we do. We have, like we heard here, a savior, a God who is tremendously awesome, totally mighty, and he is God. And that's all we really have to say. We don't have to qualify God in any way. He is God. People like to play with that and mess around with those terms and, uh, and uh, you know, figure things out. All we have to do is love and really know who he is and where we came from. And where does our help come from, right? Our help comes from the Lord. So I just think what a wonderful way for us to admit, to acknowledge, and to celebrate what he has done for us. Jesus, the risen Christ. And Jesus, he is risen. He is he risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Well, how about our closing song then? How's that? Is that good? Or is there more? Oh. Cool. One more song, right? Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so one, two, three.
Are you kidding? <laughs> yep, I am. No, Gonna get you know the what? double. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if my line is, goes online. Hey, happy Easter. Thank you. All right, goodbye.